Hey Funnel Builders, Mike here from Sell Your Service and today I want to talk about the part of your brain that creates the future. I've got some free training down below on how to know what you want out of life and create a plan to do it, how to set great goals, become hyper productive and stay motivated even when things get tough. Uh, some free training down below. So in this video, I want to talk through why you shouldn't be afraid to have a big vision, big goals and a big vision for your business. There's also a part of the brain unique to humans that we don't use enough, but as business owners and entrepreneurs, we owe evolution uh, the chance to use this part of the brain. And entrepreneurs must nurture this part of the brain like a muscle. It's literally a part of the brain that allows us to become entrepreneurs. And this is not, I'm not talking um, around in circles or a metaphor. I'm literally talking about a part of the brain that allows us to be entrepreneurs. And when you're an entrepreneur, you have a vision for something you think could be better or different. And the more you use that, the bigger your visions become. So maybe you're struggling with paying the bills and you know that your income level isn't quite at the height that you want it to be. Maybe you're just struggling to keep your head above water in general. If you're running a business, maybe you feel that nothing seems to be getting better or easier. And I certainly know that feeling for a long time. My business never seemed to grow kind of further than I wanted to. It, it seemed to be at a stalemate. Um, so I do understand, you know, that problem. There's also a problem with finding the time to spend on visualization and strategy. We often talk about visualization. We often talk about strategy. But being able to find the time to actually sit down and do that is very difficult, particularly if you're struggling with income, if you're struggling to keep your head above water, it seems like a bit of a waste of time to then think, well, I'm gonna go and read a book or I'm gonna meditate or I'm gonna spend some time on the strategy for my business. There's a huge misconception that some people are just born with great visions, with great strategy, with this kind of Herculean view of the world. I often think of Alexander the Great and people kind of have him at this level where he was born into greatness he was born to do great things he was born with this vision and i think a lot of people feel that you either have it or you don't and this is wrong this is a this is a very common misconception that your vision for a huge future for a bigger future is not limited to just a handful of human beings that this was passed down to that's an excuse given to people i often have when i give this talk live people talk about you know, Mark Zuckerberg is kind of the latest person or Jeff Bezos. And they say, yeah, but, you know, their original idea was to just kind of start a business or Facebook was to just stalk his girlfriends or stalk girls he likes because he was a nerd. And Jeff Bezos just wanted to have a business. While that might be true when they started, they had a big vision eventually. They had an enormous vision eventually because they nurtured this part of their brain. It's physically a part of the brain. I'm going to show it to you. So there are three parts of the brain, and this is what we're going to be talking about in the part of the brain that creates vision, creates futures, right? Creates strategy and the, the change in the world. There's three parts of the brain. They're designed to be used and we have to exercise it. So I'm not a neuroscientist. In fact, I'm not a particularly bright person overall. And a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about in this video, I've learned from other people. I've learned from second and third hand from other people and scientists and research and, and authors and entrepreneurs and experts. So I don't really also understand the intricacies of parts of the brain and apologies if I get some of the pronunciations wrong. And if I have this way off, please just let me know. Let me know in the comments below if I'm way off on this. But as, as I understand it, there are essentially three parts to the brain. Now, obviously, it gets more complex than that. As I mentioned, I'm not a neuroscientist. Um, uh, you know, I don't really know what I'm talking about. That's fair to say. There's, there's, there's obviously a lot more parts to the brain than that. But in terms of an evolutionary standpoint, there are three parts of the brain. And this is how messages get interpreted. So when we hear things and see things and visualize uh, and, and see, you know, things happen in front of us, the reality, they kind of go through these stages. So the first kind of model I want to show you, this is from a book called Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. Very, very powerful book. Uh, if you'd like to, to check out how to, how to read people and how to understand and pitch to people, how to understand what human beings do, why they make decisions, why they buy. Three parts of the brain. At the center, again, apologies if I get this wrong, we have the amygdala. 
which is the crocodile brain. This is the most primitive part of our brain. It's the part that essentially stems from our spinal column. It's been around for billions of years. That's why they call it the crocodile brain, because it's so primitive that it's been with us since before we were even humans. It's been with us since before there were even trees on the planet. That's how old this part of the brain is. Very, very old, very primitive. We then have the mid part of the brain, which deals with like doing and actions and completing tasks and essentially using our body. And then we have the neocortex. And the neocortex is the part of the brain that only human beings have. This allows us to imagine things that have never happened. It allows us to imagine and create visions in our mind and futures that are impossible to realize. You know, we can imagine scenarios and, and things that animals can't do. Animals are very good at doing stuff. They can even predict danger or through habits understand what's going to happen, but they can't create imagery in their mind. They can't create futures. So that's Pitch Anything by Oren Cleft. That's his demonstration of the brain. Another one that I like is from the book Entrepreneur Revolution by Daniel Priestley. Uh, the way that this is done as well is the reptile brain. So that's the amygdala. Again, over on the left-hand side, the reptile or the crocodile brain. Some people call it the lizard brain. There's loads of different names for it. A very, again, very primitive part. And you can see here it's essentially escape and survive. So that part is based around emotion and survival. The monkey part basically is attracted to drama or recognizes drama, so recognizes social interactions, essentially, as well as uh, seeing things that are familiar and understanding things that are familiar and tasks. So it likes to do things it knows already. This is, again, the monkey brain's a good example, or the dog brain as well, the mammalian brain, allows us to take on tasks, do things with the body, repeat things over and over and over, and find familiarity it likes safety it's not just about survival which the amygdala the reptile brain is about safety comfort you know this is the part of the brain that most human beings are using and then we have the empire builder or the entrepreneurial part of the brain which is the neocortex this is where we're able to look at strategic views this is where we're able to make complex decisions and you know, we're able to conceptualize things that don't actually exist and kind of bring them into fruition. We're able to imagine things that couldn't possibly exist and kind of think into the future and, and pretend. This is the pretending part of the brain. I've also talked previously about the, the daydreaming part. This is the daydreaming part, and we're the only animal that has this. The lizard brain essentially focuses on emotions. That's basically what it's there for. It's very, very primitive. I know the previous slide, Daniel, has things like love and compassion. But when we're talking like base emotions, anger, fear, hunger, you know, these kind of really basic senses, that's what the lizard brain does. It's fear, it's survival, it's making sure that that bang that you hear, that loud bang, that's the part of your brain where it goes, you have to switch on now, something's happening, is this going to affect me? Do I have to expend energy on this? Is this novel? Do I have to... Be aware of this. Is it going to kill me? Is this going to help me survive? Can I eat this? Very, very primitive. Then we have the monkey brain or the mammalian brain or the dog brain. This focuses on doing things. So this likes tasks. This is the tactical part of the brain. This is the part of the brain where when you sit on the couch and you feel guilty for not working, this is this part of the brain going into overdrive. It's like you have to be doing something. You have to grind away. You have to continue working in the mind. You have to work hard. You have to expend energy. You have to be stressed. That's the monkey part of the brain. And our education system essentially trains the monkey part of the brain to take over the rest of your life. Most of people's lives, human beings, are dictated by the monkey brain. They like safety. They like security they like comfort they're attracted to social drama and they like doing things the entrepreneurial part of the brain the neocortex focuses on vision it is able to create scenarios in your mind that don't exist or can't exist or haven't existed it's able to take things that you can imagine and make them as real as they can in front of you this is the part of the brain to do with daydreaming, to do with strategy, to do with vision, to do with what could I change in the world? What could be in the future? 
a lizard is not concerned about anything else other than itself it's purely focused on itself potentially when it's raising babies but even then that's you know that's a very uh, primitive kind of chemical reaction to look after its young until they're old enough the monkey part of the brain is worried about your localized family your community a monkey in a family does not care about any other monkeys 100 miles away the entrepreneurial brain is capable of empathizing with every human being and animal on the planet. It's able to scale its vision for change massively. And yet we are taught in schools to focus on doing and being uh, and being in control or being controlled by the monkey part of the brain. There's a book called Why Nations Fail. Uh, by Darren Eshimoglu, uh, as well as James Robinson, which essentially talks about how the entrepreneurial part of the brain has been used for thousands of years. What's really interesting is we look at why has technology come on so far in the last hundred years? It's accelerated at a pace far faster than ever before. And people have said, well, it's for one thing or, or another. The reality is there have been entrepreneurial ideas like similar to the industrial revolution which is essentially production at mass scale without manual labor you know using factories and machines in the greek times or grecian times in the roman times and turkish times and byzantine times and babylonian times and through africa but the reality is it's usually stamped out by political fear people who are in charge don't like the idea of the common man using the entrepreneurial part of their brain because they're usually servants to hire you know authorities a king doesn't want its servants or his or her servants to come up with ways of making their job their life easier because they believe that to be the best possible servant and to keep power remain in power other people can't also have power the reason the industrial revolution was so important and the reason it sprung predominantly from england and then spread over to america and much of western europe is because uh, there was less power from kind of you know kings and lords at the time to withhold the ability for people to use the entrepreneurial part of their brain. When people came up with the idea of factories and mass production, there wasn't a lot that kings could do about it. Whereas in many many time in many times uh, during you know more ancient times in human history, kings and lords and rulers and emperors they could literally just destroy and kill people who had these ideas and it's not uncommon the book has a lot of examples of people who did come up with ideas that would make farming and agriculture and transport and communication much easier and much faster and not only were they stamped out the ideas stamped out because they were worried about losing power because you know as soon as common people get more technology they get more power and they will lose power they'll lose income um, it goes into a huge amount of examples of this, but the person was often killed as well as, as punishment. So this is not new. This is not something we've just come up with. We've been experiencing this for thousands of years, and it's only in the last hundred years, and that's not even across the entire globe. That's most of the globe. We're allowed and encouraged to use that, and our education system has to keep up with that. You have the real chance to exercise this ability you have a real chance to exercise this part of the brain you can use your entrepreneurial part of your brain and begin to visualize and spend time strategizing this isn't just a thing of you know some people can do it some people can't it's literally a part of the brain that allows you to be capable of it so in my previous video when i talked about daydreaming and how you have the power to daydream and how it's incredibly important this is something you should be doing imagining the future imagining what could be what's really interesting is the more you do it the more accustomed you'll be to it and the more you'll allow yourself to think of these mad futures where you know no one else is able to uh, create this kind of change in the world and you'll, you'll be more comfortable with thinking about it when was the last time that you exercised your vision or the entrepreneur's brain? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear when the last time was that you strategized about something or thought about your vision or it became clear that you should change something. Have you ever had an epiphany moment or a moment of clarity? Maybe when you're walking or you're out and there's no stimulus around you and you're just allowing your brain to churn over these ideas. That's the creative part. That's your neocortex working in overdrive and producing ideas and, and producing vision 
visions for you. Let me know in the comments below if that's ever happened to you. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'm Mike from Sell Your Service. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and a subscribe. If you're a funnel builder, I produce new video content every single week. Uh, hit the bell icon as well to get notified about when I produce new videos. And if you could share this on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, that would massively help me out. That's how I grow my subscriber base and I can bring more videos to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Keep building those funnels. Thanks for watching guys. I've got a couple of videos here which you might be interested in talking about funnel related topics like how to price a marketing funnel and how to find your first marketing funnel customer. In the meantime, if this video was useful, hit that like button. Make sure to leave me a comment and subscribe if you are a funnel builder. I'll see you on the next video. Keep building those funnels.